What is antihistamine? To know what antihistamines are, we should first look at histamines. Histamine is an organic compound present in all tissues. These are found in high concentrations in the lung, skin, and gastrointestinal tract. Histamines are involved in local immune responses to foreign pathogens or sites of potential injury. Most histamine in the body is generated in granules, in mast cells, and in white blood cells called basophils and eosinophils. These can be located from the nose, mouth, feet, internal body surfaces, to the blood vessels in our body. Histamine can also be found in other cells, including the brain, where it functions as a neurotransmitter. Another important site of histamine storage and release is the enterochromaffin-like cell of the stomach. Histamine release binds to something called histamine receptors, which are found on the cells and cause a response. So let's take a look at the term antihistamine again. It's an anti of histamine. So that's the opposite of histamine, right? This works by a compound that binds to the histamine receptors and does not produce a response. So how does this work in the body? Well, when antihistamines are put into the body, histamine has to compete with antihistamines to bind to the receptor. If there are more of the antihistamines binding to a receptor at a particular site, there will be less of a response. At this moment, there are four classes of histamine receptors, H1, H2, H3, and H4, which histamine can bind to. Hence, there are different classes of antihistamines. H1 receptors are located on blood vessels. When histamine binds to these receptors, the blood vessels dilate which increase the flow of blood and cause leakage. When you have an allergic response to external stimuli on your skin, histamine binds to the receptors at the site and cause a buildup of white blood cells, leading to inflammation in that area. There are also histamines that bind to H1 receptors on the sensory nerves in our noses which stimulates and causes a person to have an inflamed nose and increased mucus production. This is a common allergic reaction called hay fever. When we feel motion sickness, H1 receptors located in the central nervous system sends information to the brain, which may induce vomiting and nausea. Once again, we have a H1 antihistamines that block these receptors and stop us from wanting to vomit, for example during a boat trip. Despite these benefits, there are problems with taking H1 antihistamines as they may cross the blood-brain barrier and inhibit other potential histamine receptors that control other physiological functions such as wakefulness. The first and oldest generations of antihistamines were found by Ernest Fanor and Daniel Bovert in 1993. This was a big breakthrough for the clinical uses of antihistamines. However, these had many side effects due to the lack of selectivity towards receptors, as it also blocks acetylcholine receptors in the body, which essentially induces dry mouth, blurred vision, and a dry nasal mucosa. It will also have effects on the central nervous system as it crosses the blood-brain barrier, causing drowsiness. Second generation antihistamines are the improved versions from the first generation H1 antihistamines. It is more selective and won't cause many side effects whilst also providing a relief of the allergic conditions. It won't cross the blood-brain barrier because of ionization at physiological pH levels. However, it still has a chance of being metabolized by hepatic enzymes and may interfere with other drugs taken. Now onto H2 histamines. These are present in the stomach wall and will increase levels of gastric acid release. But excessive release of gastric acid may cause nasty peptic ulcers and heartburns. This is when H2 antihistamines are used to decrease the levels of gastric acid release. H2 antihistamines generally don't have many side effects except for cimetidine, which may be metabolized by hepatic enzymes and cause drug interactions, affecting other drug actions. Rare 
Side effects of H2 include headaches, tiredness, dizziness, confusion, diarrhea, constipation, and rashes. H3 receptors are an interesting class type. These are primarily found in the brain and instead of reducing a physiological effect, it acts as a histamine release modulator. Hence, the H3 antihistamine's use actually inhibits histamine release in the brain to cause stimulatory effects. Unlike H1 antihistamines, which are sedating, this has potential to be used for cognitive disorders, and current research is being undertaken for its potential effects on Alzheimer's. Not much is known about H4 histamines except that they act on H4 receptors in bone marrow and white blood cells according to experiments on mice. Although current research is being done to better understand its mechanisms, from a research conducted by William Harvey Research Foundation, there is a high selective histamine H4 antagonist called VUF6002, which may treat asthma and allergies. To wrap up, improvement of antihistamine drugs with fewer side effects can have further clinical uses. More classes of histamine receptors are being investigated and in the near future may be a potential target for the use of antihistamines. Thank you.